everybody! My name is Caroline Kaufman and I am a Brooklyn-based textile artist. Today we're going to be learning an amazing embroidery technique called Shishiko Embroidery. This technique comes from Japan and is traditionally used to repair clothing. So we're going to be looking in our own wardrobes today and thinking, hmm, what do I have that has a rip or a tear that could use a little fixing? What can I give a second life to? What can I add a decorative patch of fabric to? We're gonna be learning all about this technique and how we can take something we already have and give it a second life. Let's take a look at what materials we'll need today for this project. First, we will need an embroidery needle. The hole at the top of the needle is called an eye. We want to choose a needle with a slightly larger eye so that it fits our embroidery thread. Secondly, we will need some type of straight pin to hold our fabric in place. You can use smaller needles, safety pins, or traditional sewing straight pins. The next material that we'll be using is any type of scissor. I like a smaller embroidery snip, but any scissor that you find around the house will work perfectly. Let's take a look at our embroidery threads. Traditional shishiko uses a thread that is more twisted than embroidery thread. See this texture? That's there so that the fibers don't separate when they're embroidered. Today though, we'll be using a thread that's a little bit more common. This is a regular embroidery thread that you might have lying around the house or that you can buy at most craft stores. You can pick out a fun color or pick a color that matches the fabric that you'll be using. If you can't find any embroidery thread, you can also use a traditional sewing floss or even a thin yarn that looks like this. Now we are ready to choose a fabric to embroider on. An ideal fabric is one that is not too tightly woven like a linen. See how when I pull this fabric, it doesn't stretch too much? That's perfect for our embroidery because it won't warp when it's connected to our garment. You can choose a fun color or pattern. Again, the design is really up to you. Now comes the fun part. You get to go to your closet and find an item of clothing that you want to add some embroidery to. I think jeans work perfectly because they often have little rips in them and they're not too stretchy. You can see here underneath this pocket a place where there used to be a really big rip. Now if you can't find an item of clothing that has a rip in it, another thing that we can do is add a patch to our item of clothing. So I kind of like to take my fabric if I'm adding a patch and lay it out first, maybe layer a couple patches on there to see what it will look like. You can add a patch to the knee of the jean, etc. Okay, now that we have all of our materials, let's begin. To begin, we're going to cut a piece of embroidery thread that is approximately an arm's length. I like to hold one end of the thread in my thumb and forefinger and stretch it to my shoulder. That's how I know it's not too short or too long. Next, we're going to thread our needle, like so. You're going to take both ends of the embroidery thread and create a knot. To make an embroidery knot, we're going to roll the thread around our forefinger once and using our thumb, roll it through and then pull. This will create a little embroidery knot. Now we have our garment that we're going to embroider on. We wanna locate our hole. Now on this side of the jean, I've already demonstrated the technique as I showed you before but I'm going to do a matching technique on the other side where there's another hole. So first what we're gonna do is turn our garment inside out so that we can pin our fabric to the rip. Here you can see what 
the inside of the garment will look like when your embroidery technique is complete. The fun thing about this technique is it's not super perfect or precise. And the whole point is to have something that looks a little bit natural, rugged, and imperfect on your jeans. So we're gonna take our fabric square, again, not perfect, just a scrap, and lay it over our rib. We wanna make sure our square is a little bit bigger than the rib that we're pinning so that it has a little bit of excess border around it. So I'm gonna lay my fabric like so, and I'm going to take those straight pins from earlier and go around the outside of the fabric, putting the pins in. You can also use safety pins. So I'm gonna continue around the outside of the square, putting the pins in. If you're doing a pair of pants, you want to be careful that you don't go all the way through the legs because you don't want the two legs of your jeans to be sewn together. Then you wouldn't be able to fit your leg in. That would not be good. <laughs> so let's put our pins around the perimeter. We don't want our fabric to move around a lot. Um, so these little pins are serving as an embroidery hoop, something like that, so that it just holds everything perfectly in place. When you're finished pinning your fabric, it will look like this, with all the pins going around the outside of your square. Now we're going to be working inside out and if you're working with jeans, I like to put my hand inside the jeans, kind of holding the bottom of the fabric flat so that I make sure it doesn't go all the way through to the other side of the leg. Next, I'm going to insert the needle into the fabric. Watch closely. I move the needle in and out until I have a few stitches on the needle. Then I pull the needle all the way through. Until it stops at the knot. I'm going to repeat this pattern going all the way to the end of the patch in a straight line. Out and in doing two or three stitches at a time on the needle about the same length and pulling through. When you get to the end of the square, you're gonna wanna turn your garment around and repeat the same technique back. Sewing little rows of stitches back and forth, back and forth. Keep pulling the fabric taut to ensure that there is no puckering. Continue this stitching technique until you reach the end of the row. There's a concept in Japan called wabi-sabi, which basically means the art of imperfection. And so when I'm doing my rows back and forth, I'm really inspired by stitches that aren't perfectly straight, that look a little bit wabi-sabi. But how your stitches look is up to you. If you wanna draw straight lines on with pencils to ensure that they're perfectly straight before you start, that's totally fine too. Everyone has a different idea of the look that they're into. And you just repeat back and forth, back and forth. 
When you're finished with your embroidery, it will look a little something like this. A really beautiful organic pattern that repairs a rip or a tear in your favorite jeans. The next thing I'm going to demonstrate is how to do a patch on a different type of garment. So here I have this quilted jacket that has a lot of little rips in it. And I cut out a white linen square and I'm going to pin it to the quilted fabric. Okay, now we've pinned our little square of fabric to the quilted jacket. And if you have a regular denim jacket or t-shirt or any garment that doesn't have a rip or a tear, you can just pin the patch right on top for a decorative design. So here I have our pinned square and we're going to start embroidering it. Ta-da, and there you have it. We have the Shishiko embroidery stitch covering up a patch. It looks like we should do another one and patch up that second hole, but I think this turned out really nice. I like how organic and naturally stitched it looks on this quilt jacket. Happy stitching, everybody. Share what you make with us by using the hashtag PrattYouthAtHome.